Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has made numerous pleas to NATO and its allies to impose a no-fly zone over the country. But what exactly is a no-fly zone? And why won't the U.S. enforce one over Ukraine? A no-fly zone is a section of airspace in which military forces revoke access to all other aircraft. What would that mean over Ukraine? What it would mean is that American and NATO pilots would be up in the air over Ukraine, patrolling the sky with orders to chase away or shoot down any Russian plane that uh, came into Ukraine. So it would create a situation in which direct con uh, combat between uh, U.S. and Russian pilots was a likelihood. It is that distinct possibility of direct combat between nuclear armed nations that has kept President Biden and his allies from agreeing. The NATO alliance is made up of 30 member nations, and an attack on one is considered an attack on all. So if a U.S. warplane were to be shot down over Ukraine while enforcing a no-fly zone, for instance, it could result in a full-fledged war in Europe involving many countries. Russian President Vladimir Putin has also made it clear that he would see any third-party declaration of a no-fly zone over Ukraine as direct participation in the war. It also isn't quite clear how much a no-fly zone could do to stop Russia's devastating attacks on Ukraine cities, since many of Russia's attacks are being carried out from afar by long-range missiles and planes that never leave Russian airspace. The U.S. has participated in four no-fly zones before, two over Iraq, one over Libya, and one over Bosnia and Herzegovina. And while they were implemented to protect civilians, they came at a cost. When the U.S. imposed the two no-fly zones over Iraq following the Gulf War, it cost the U.S. $1.3 billion per year from 1996 to 2001. 